and welcome to this week's episode of How to Be a Great GM. My name is Guy, and today we are dealing with the interesting issue of NPC AI, which uh, is hopefully going to revolutionize how you look at NPCs and doing anything on the fly. Improvisation is going to be assisted by NPC AI. Now, remember to hit that like button or the subscribe button. It helps the channel in ways that you cannot possibly imagine, and it takes just one or two clicks. So please do that. World Anvil is today's sponsor of the video, and World Anvil is full of all kinds of super useful, amazing templates, guides. It is, of course, an ultimate repository for all of your GM notes, for all of your world building, and even for your characters as well. They've got just so much in terms of what you can do, timelines, heraldry, maps, pinning maps, designing all kinds of cool encounters. Everything that you could possibly want in terms of creating your world space is waiting for you at worldanvil.com. Use the code GREATGM for a discount when signing up for a subscription, which is not required to use the basic program. So the idea of NPC AI, AI basically means artificial intelligence, and so when we refer to NPC artificial intelligence, what we are referring to there is the programming that goes into an NPC that allows it to autonomously act. Now, what programming? We're not programmers. We're not going to be using markup languages or C sharps or D flats or, well, hang on a moment, that's musical. Anyway, whatever the programming languages are, I think there's one's called Python Anyway, whatever. We're not going to be doing that. We're going to be looking at how do we program ourselves as GMs to create NPCs that come with an inbuilt AI. And the term I have come up with, which helps me remember what I need to do for every single NPC that I include in my game, is OGAS. OGAS is an acronym that stands for Occupation, Goal, Attitude, and Stake. Now, OGAS is something that I apply to every single NPC that my characters, that my players, uh, interact with. So the moment they walk up to somebody in, in any situation, whether it is in a dungeon, in a forest, in a tavern, in a spaceport, the moment the PCs start to talk to an NPC, I apply OGAS. And that automatically creates this NPC AI. And what OGAS does is it will create an NPC that will tell me what they are most likely to do and to talk about when engaged by PCs. So OGAS, O stands for occupation. Most NPCs will have an occupation. Think about your own occupation for that matter. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are working for a living. You could be someone who is living on benefits or you could be someone who has the luxury of, you know, very rich family members so you don't have to work. It doesn't matter. Whatever you do on a daily basis, that is your occupation in broad strokes because the occupation will give you something to talk about. You might complain about your occupation. You might complain about your co-workers. You might enjoy your occupation and relish or cherish your co-workers. But your occupation also requires you to do certain things and to have certain skills in order to do it. So all of that suddenly is baked into the NPC straight away when you decide their occupation. If we take, for example, a city guard, a city guard would have certain things inherent that they can't really do without. They would have some combat prowess, they would have some combat training, hopefully. They would have some understanding of the law and what is legal and was not legal. They would have some understanding of what their jurisdiction is, what they can and cannot do to members of the public. All of that comes along with just their occupation. Now, some uh, city guard might enjoy being city guard, some might not. Again, it all comes through uh, in the occupation. So occupation is our very first programming uh, tool, if you like. We then move on to G of the OGAS, which is goal. Now, every NPC, everything on the planet has a goal. Most of the time it's to survive, to procreate, and basically that's it. So when you look at it, how does it survive? Well, it's got to eat, it's got to have shelter, it's got to have this, it's got to have that. So usually our goal is somewhere along those things. The moment you step into the realm of sentience, our goals become far more complicated. At least we make them more complicated. So the goal now is, oh, well, actually, I want that pretty maiden to notice me uh, because I quite fancy that pretty maiden. 
or I want to get free food, so I'm going to go and try and get that free food by being a little bit bullish towards people who could possibly give me free food, so they give me free food so I go away. Goals are, there are billions of different goals for you to choose from, so choose a goal which you think is going to create the most interesting space for your NPC to operate in. So with our city guard, let's say the city guard's goal is to get free stuff from taverns and pubs on their patrol route. This means we are using their occupation, they are using their occupation to try and further their own goal, which is to get free stuff. This then leads us on to the A of Ogas, which is attitude. Now, the attitude of this NPC is going to change. Our attitudes change from time to time. But generally speaking, this is their worldview. This is how they are in 99% of the situations. This is how they behave. Now, it could be brutish. It could be simple. It could be um, noble. It could be dignified. It could be happy. It could be joyful. It could be helpful. It could be sorrowful. It could be apathetic. Again, there are so many different types of attitudes that you could apply to this particular uh, individual. Again, it's about applying ones that you think are going to create the most interesting outcome. We're going to talk a bit more about that later on in the video. So when it comes to our attitude of our guard who's wandering around trying to get free stuff, I think our guard would have a pretty good sense of being apathetic. They don't particularly care about their occupation. They're really just there for the free food. And so that is going to be their primary attitude. Then we get to the S of Ogas, which is steak. What stake does the guard have in obtaining their goal in their occupation and in their attitude? The stake, the stake basically is how much resistance, how much effort are they going to put in to securing all three of the other letters of Ogas. So if the guard's stake in their occupation is, well, if they don't do a good job, they'll get fired, which means they won't get free food, then their stake in their occupation is pretty high. They will want to be a fairly good guard. Now, if the stake in getting free stuff is also pretty high, they might get quite brutish about it. Walk past the tavern going, well, I might not walk past this tavern tomorrow night. And then what would happen? Imagine all the thieves that would fall upon you. I could walk past tomorrow night, but I get so thirsty. That's if they've got a high stake. If they've got a low stake in getting free stuff, then they probably wouldn't try that. They would probably just walk past and say, oh yeah, spare a drink for a guardsman on patrol? No? All right, and off they go. You see how building out our ogre starts to give us this NPC AI. The NPC is now telling us exactly what they're going to be doing just based on these four parameters. Now, when we look at the stake... This transcends into the personal as well, in terms of our character's attitude. Now, the character might be apathetic, but if the combat that is about to ensue risks their life, the stake in being apathetic changes very quickly to being pathetic or to trying to just survive. Remember those two goals, survive and reproduce? So we are going to then try to survive at all costs. We are apathetic. We don't really care. We are pathetic, perhaps, because we have a high stake here. Please don't kill us. The god will surrender very, very quickly. If, of course, the guard is very angry and the stake in survival is they don't particularly care because their anger is overriding all of that, then they might stay in the fight a lot longer. To the death, well, I'm not so sure. So we have to think about that. Now, when we look at our Ogas, the interesting thing about designing an Ogas on the fly is that if we remember that conflict is the central point around which all drama and which all of our entire adventures should be based... When we create an NPC, we should be asking ourselves, will conflict with this NPC create a more interesting story or a less interesting story? And by story, in this particular context, I mean encounter. So the PCs walk up to a tavern keeper. You apply Ogas to the tavern keeper. The tavern keeper has to look after the tavern, is trying to make money, and is watering down the alcohol to make even more money. And they don't want anyone to find that out. That is their Ogas, basically, and their stake is very high. If someone were to find out about them watering down the alcohol, their patrons might leave and not come back. So they have a pretty high stake in keeping that secret. If we want there to be conflict, we will let slip that information that the beer is watered down. It will create a conflict point and the PCs will engage with the NPC in a conflict type of way. The PCs might try and extort that barman, etc, etc. The barman might try to kill the PCs to keep that information quiet. 
Interesting how it just suddenly pops out because we wanted to try and create a conflict. You don't have to always do this, of course. Most of the time, your NPCs should be trying to avoid conflict. That is not their goal. But if you want to create conflict, well, just give them an opposite uh, ogas to what the PCs are after or to, towards the PCs, and you will create that conflict. Now, finally, we take our ogas and we wrap it into the space of the adventure itself. And we stand back and we say, OK, we have our NPC and we know how our NPC is going to act. <clears throat> we now can give it some additional parameters, which is to help the PCs or to help the players. So if the players don't know what to do, if they're kind of lost and they're going, well, we're looking for plot, we're looking for this, we're looking for that, then all you need to do is add to that NPC that they're going to give the PCs some additional information. Oh, you look, look you lot look like you are... Um, going on a hunt or something. Um, I hope you know about the dangerous deer with the magical antlers. It gives them something, it gives them something to work with, and you fall back on the Ogas to work out how the NPC is going to tell that information to the players. It's really as simple as that. So with your Ogas in place, your NPC is going to have certain things that they will say and certain things that they won't say, is going to agree to certain things and not other things, and will try to get something out of the PCs, which is usually to their own benefit. It's a fairly cynical way of looking at our interactions with other humans on this planet, but basically sometimes that's what it really does boil down to. We either want to get something, information, an item, an object, cash, advantage over someone else, and we seek ways of doing that. OGAS is going to help you to determine exactly how your NPC is going to do that. So your task for this week is to create an OGAS. Create a whole lot of OGASs, by the way. The more you practice this, the easier it's going to become for you to drop it into your games. So create an NPC randomly. Just pull one NPC out of the air that your PCs are most likely to encounter and then apply OGAS to them. And then practice going, well, this is what the NPC is doing. So how would that OGAS exhibit itself? How would it present itself out to the world. How would this NPC operate with this particular OGAS? Then try a complete opposite OGAS and apply that to an NPC and see how different those two NPCs are. Try and figure out, well, what would happen if these two NPCs met? What's the dialogue that's going to happen between the two? And it'll be very interesting to see. You will start to realize that they can have a conversation with each other about something. If they're in the same space and they're both waiting for something or they're both doing something or just being bored, sitting, doing nothing, what will the one say to the other and how will they then respond? The AI should take over and you should be able to have a split personality conversation with yourself whilst completing this task. Anyway, until next time, a big thank you to my patrons who make this channel possible. Now, if you are not a patron, that's not a problem. If you head on over to our website, www.greatgamemaster.com, you will find a written uh, version of this video with points and annotations and things done by our social media goblins. Thank you very much to her for doing all of that. All of the notes are available. Just go to our website and click on videos and choose a video and you will see this as a written up note. Until next time, thanks for watching and happy gaming.